Once you're comfortable with capacity factor, actually one of the most useful things about it is that you can play around with it to calculate different things, which is what I'll briefly introduce here. And then there's a calculator which we provided, which you can play around with to do that for yourself. So we saw that this was our basic calculation for capacity factor. We were dividing the actual energy generated by a power plant by the maximum theoretical energy output of that power plant, which is the maximum power output of that power plant. It's capacity multiplied by the time period over which you're operating. So it was megawatt hours divided by megawatt hours, capacity factor being a percentage. And we also made the point that Typically, capacity factor is not calculated over shorter periods like a day. It's typically calculated over the course of a year, a year being 8,760 hours, which is quite a useful number to remember. It'll crop up time and again in energy power type calculations. That's all very interesting, but what's useful about this relationship is then to be able to play around with different numbers and rearrange it, in fact, to calculate different things. So for example I can rearrange that equation so it looks like this. So I basically move capacity and time from the bottom of the right hand side to the top of the left hand side. And now what that means is that if I know my capacity factor or I can make some assumption about my capacity factor I can use that to calculate how much energy I'm going to generate from a power plant of a certain capacity over a certain period of time. So why might you do that? One example might be if you're looking at building a solar power plant, for example, in a particular location, you could come up with a first order estimation of how much energy that solar power plant is likely to produce. If you know the capacity factor of other solar plants that already exist in that area, or based on your measurements of the solar resource, how often the sun shines and how strongly the sun shines. So knowing the capacity factor, and you wanted to build a certain capacity, you could come up with an estimate of how much energy it's going to produce. Equally, I could rearrange my equation like that. Now this is saying, if I know the amount of energy I'm talking about, and again, I know the capacity factor, or I can make some assumption about capacity factor, then I can actually use that to come up with a figure for how much capacity I would need to build to generate that amount of energy. So an example of that might be to say, well, how much capacity of wind farm do I need to build to provide enough energy to power 8,000 homes? You know the energy required. You might be able to estimate capacity factor based on other wind farms in that region or based on your wind resource measurements. And so you could use that to estimate how much capacity you would need to build, how many turbines you would need, how much land you would need, and so on. Another common calculation which might use this arrangement is to say, OK, we want to replace 10% of the energy generated with coal power generation with solar power generation because we want to reduce carbon emissions. Again, you could take the energy that you want to replace. You could have some assumption on capacity factor of the solar farms you're going to build. And again, that would tell you how much capacity of solar you would need to build to replace the equivalent capacity of coal power generation. And obviously, if energy is the same in both cases, but capacity factor is lower for solar than for coal, for example, you'll need to build a higher capacity of solar to replace a certain capacity of coal. You'll need to build more megawatts to produce the same number of megawatt hours if the capacity factor is lower. And finally, of course, the most useful thing of all is to relate this to money, seeing as we're talking about the business of energy. And an obvious way to do that is to look at that equation and say, well, capacity costs us money. If I build a 200 megawatt wind farm, for example, Regardless of whether it's windy or not, that's money I've spent. So you've got to spend money to build capacity, whether or not it generates energy, for how much time and to what extent. And so we use things like dollars per watt as a typical metric for installed cost, capital cost, whatever you want to call it. So on the bottom line of that equation, we've got something that costs money. On the top line, of course, it's 
generating energy that makes us money. We sell units of energy in dollars per megawatt hour. So on the top line of the equation, we've got energy, which is making us money. On the bottom line, we've got capacity, which is costing us money. From an economic point of view, the importance of capacity factor is that it's a ratio between something that's making us money and something that's costing us money. What that means is obviously a higher capacity factor. Yes, you get more energy from the same capacity that you've built. But from an economic point of view, that's important because it means if you had two wind farms, for example, that both cost the same amount of money because the dollar per watt cost was the same, but one had a higher capacity factor and is generating more energy, it's generating more money from the same installed cost, from the same capital investment. Or at least that would be true if the energy price, the dollar per megawatt hour that you could sell your energy for, was the same in both cases. Now, more realistically, and actually more helpfully in many cases, particularly if you're an energy purchaser, is that in a competitive market, a higher capacity factor, rather than making more money from the same investment, so generating higher returns, will allow an investor to make the same returns, the same amount of money, by selling energy at a lower price. Because on the top line of that equation, if you're generating more energy, because you've got a higher capacity factor, and you only need to generate the same amount of money as another project to make the same level of profit, it means you can afford to lower the price. And so you're more competitive. That, that electricity can be sold at a more competitive rate. So higher capacity factor can also mean lower prices for the same investment. And lower prices, lower energy costs are obviously good, both from a consumer's point of view, but also from a project point of view, especially if you're in a market where you're bidding for licenses or bidding for feed-in tariffs or bidding for other policy mechanisms based on price, which is commonly the case these days. Okay, thank you.